Hello and welcome to the Crafting Sheds. I'm Ruth from Beltane Gifts and today we're going to be making one of these. Now this is what I like to refer to as a dust bunny and the reason I call it a dust bunny is because I make it out of all those little pieces of fibre that you'd normally pull off if it's the wrong colour or if you've got it left over after a project and it's pieces that are too small to use for a full project but if you save them up you end up with just kind of like a handful of fibre a bit like this and what you can do with it later is basically form it into a different shape. So I like to make dust bunnies and the way I do that is I will take all of this fibre, I'll take off a small section and keep it to one side to turn into ears and tail and the rest I'm going to form into a, just a nice soft ball. You don't want to over felt this, we want it to be um, quite fluffy and easy to shape because we want to create our little bunny out of it. So I'm going to be doing that first and here we are. So this is my felted ball. If you're not sure how to felt a ball yourself I've got a link in the description of a tutorial I've done before on that. So yes that's my ball and if you see when I squish it it's very loose which is perfect for what we need. So let me show you what other things we'll be needing going to need our felting pad. I use a cloth bag filled with rice. We've got a needle and black thread for attaching the eyes and nose. I've got some black beads which I'm going to be using for the eyes and nose. I've got I think these are six mil and eight mil. You can use whatever size you like but I quite like these. I've got a felting needle. This is a fine one. It's I think it's just a generic one. I don't think it's a gauged one. And I've got some finger protectors just because I am going to be holding this as I work so I don't want to end up stabbing myself. I've also got just a leftover bit of the fibre I've used to make my ball which I'm going to be using for the tail and ears. So to start off I've got my finger protectors on, I've got my ball here. What we're going to do is decide which way up we want it to be. Yeah I think like that I'm going to go for. And what we need to do is start off by adding our little feet. So to do that, what I'd like to do is just stab in and create a line. And I do that by stabbing quite close together and just working my way just around the ball. And if you see it's almost halfway I'm going. And this is gonna be our front and back and these are gonna be our feet. So what I'm gonna do is just squeeze between finger and thumb just to bring everything in together and just go over that line again. And this is why we're wearing our finger protectors because I really would have stabbed myself by now otherwise. And what we want to do is make each of these sections an individual leg and to do that what we do is imagine that there's a line going through the centre of each one and we want to create like a cylinder shape. To do that the point of the needle always has to be pointing towards that central line. So as I work round you can see the needle's direction is changing so it's always pointing towards that central line. And just work your way up and down. We want about a centimetre or so for each leg. So just keep going round, just stabbing in the same way, about a centimetre's worth. Once that's starting to come in there, what we can do is start flattening the top of our foot. So what we're gonna be doing is stabbing at a 90 degree angle to the plane we want to create. As we want the foot to be flat, we're just gonna be stabbing just around in a circle. So see where the outline is, we're just going to be stabbing straight down just within that line. Okay, now this does flatten the foot a bit, so we're just going to keep doing that going over around the sides just to create that curve and then from the top just to flatten it down. And what will happen is it'll definitely shrink right in but it'll give us a nice firm foot. Once this starts to come in and it's starting to firm up a little bit, you can do lighter jabs closer together and that'll give you a, a nice smooth finish. Don't forget to make sure to really go into that central join there and really define it. We want to make sure that the legs are separate or at least appear separate. Okay so that's starting to firm up. What I'm going to do is match it with the other leg and then we're going to add the bottom and the tummy. And there we go. So the feet are starting to be a lot more defined now. There's still a lot of squish to them. They can be gone over again. But what I want to do is just to add in some of the other features first before we go over the whole thing. Now to add the tummy, what I'm going to do is imagine that there's a point there, just like the belly button. And what I'm going to be doing is pointing my needle towards that point and just going around in a little bit of a curve. 
just to start defining that stomach and what you can do if like mine yours is quite wide we can just give it a little squish from the sides with finger and thumb and that pushes all that fiber there into that tummy area you can see it's sticking out so when we go over it again all those fibers are closer together so when we stab them they're going to hold in place and be a lot easier to define now i'm stabbing quite deeply and far apart at this point because i want to just create that overall shape try not to overdo it though we want to make him gradually and that way we can really control the finished shape that we end up there we go so you can see that's starting to to take on like a tummy shape so i'm going to start doing the bum now and because i did that long line the lines actually carried on a little bit just up here so we've already got that kind of defined bump <laughs> coming on now the bums i do on my little creations tend to be quite pert please don't judge me um that's just how i like the bums on my creations to be so we're just going to really define this again just pretending that each leg is individual so each bum cheek is individual imagine that there is a point in the center there so instead of doing one big curve around the whole thing we're just going to do two little curves and again I'm just pinching between finger and thumb just to bring those fibres closer together and make the felting process that bit quicker. Okay once you've got your little curves there what you can do is just lightly felt over the whole thing we're not stabbing too deeply now what we want to do is just smooth the surface so again I'm just curving that see from here that needle direction just to get the curve shape and I'm just doing little jabs close together all over just to bring that fibre in now you may find that some of the fibres don't work well together and um, this can especially be the case if you've got a bit of synthetic fibre in there which, which just technically doesn't felt um, in which case just make sure that you go over it quite a lot you might just have to really felt it just to push everything together so that it will hold shape once we let go okay now as you bring everything down you'll find that the line down the centre is less defined not sure if you can see that there so all you have to do is just straight down little jabs close together just redefine that line and what you'll find is the two sides will just pull in together as the fibers tighten then what you can do is just go over the sides the stomach just work your way around the base just until it starts to firm up a little okay there so you can see that we're starting to get nice defined bottom half to our little creation what we need to do now is just to create a nice pointed top um, I like to have quite a big belly and then taper up towards the top where the, the head and the ears is going to be. Although to be fair this whole thing doesn't have a neck or anything, it's all kind of big head, belly, feet, that's all it is. So the way we're going to do this is we're just going to create a little dome at the top and let it taper out to the big belly. And to do this I'm just going to pinch lightly between finger and thumb. And what I'm imagining is that there's a line from the top of the head right down to the bottom of the feet and that goes through the centre of the whole thing. And at the top I'm going to be working at kind of a 45 degree angle towards that line and I'm just going to be stabbing, rotating and stabbing, keeping that angle and this will help to keep that nice curved top and it'll also help bring everything in. Now you probably notice I'm not going down too far this is just where the head's going to be, um, which is probably the top quarter. Okay, so if you have a look there, you can see we're getting a nice angle here. Now it does seem as though it's much smaller than we would want it, but because we need to go in so much on this big fluffy body, um, it should be about right once we're, we're at that point. So I'm going to start smoothing out the body now. Again, just a little bit of a light pinch between finger and thumb and what I want to do is get a nice curve here which goes from here where we finish stabbing for the head and to that point where the belly starts and again to do this we're just imagining there's a point right in the center and we're just going to be aiming our needle towards that point and working around as we rotate him now to demonstrate I have been stabbing with the needle pointing towards me I wouldn't recommend this if you're doing it yourself just because you it just doesn't give you the control you need so if you are going to be doing this yourself always make sure that you can see where the point of your needle is going in and that just gives you that control and just make sure that you don't stab things you shouldn't really so I've just turned it to the side a little bit so I can see better <laughs> now you might notice that I do occasionally pull fibers off um, this is mainly dog hair just because <laughs> one of our dogs is molting and um, it gets everywhere 
Now coming to the back here you'll see that we've already got the curve for the bottom and we've got a big wadge of fibre here which we don't want. What I want to do is create a bit more of a straight back coming down towards the bum. So instead of doing my curve around the central point, what I'm going to be doing is just stabbing at a set angle, which is, let's say, about a 45 degree angle again, just working all the way down from the back of the neck that we were creating, just down to the top of the bottom. And you can see there it's just creating that flat edge. So we're going to keep that up all across the back. And I'm going to give the sides a bit of a flattening as well. And then when we get back to the front, we're going to go back to doing our, our curve again. Now, don't worry if it's not looking finished when you've done your first complete pass. We're going to keep going and bringing it in gradually until we're happy with the shape. Okay, so that's my first pass. And you can see it is still very squishy. So we can bring it in a lot more. I definitely recommend doing this gradually and bring it in gradually just because that way you get a lot more control over the finished shape. Okay so I'm going to go over the whole thing again now and what I'm going to do is just redefine the lines that I put in and the shapes for the bottom and the tummy and the top of the head and I'm going to keep going until when I squeeze it it resists. We don't want it to be solid solid um, you don't need to do it until you can't get your needle in. What we want to be able to do though is be able to add things to it later so it needs to be solid enough that when we add our little tail at the back and our little ears that um, we're not going to end up with a great big indentation where it's it's just kind of not fighting back so yeah that's going to take me a few minutes I shall be back soon okay half an hour later I've gone over him and you can see it's actually much smaller than it started out as but I've firmed everything up so there's still a bit of squish to it I could make it smaller if I wanted to or keep shaping it but I think I'm going to stick with it as is for now because what I want to do is show you how to add the nose and eyes first and then we'll add the ears okay so for this we're going to need our beads and our needle and thread and what we're going to do is just come in from the side and come out through the back of the head with the needle and thread pull until the tail of your thread is just inside the body and then we're going to do a couple of little stitches just at the back of the head just to secure the thread then we're going to sew through to the front and just decide where you want your eyes and nose to be I think I want my eyes to be just towards the top here so just going to come through, add one of my beads. Now you can use smaller ones if you wanted to for the eyes. I'm going quite big with these. And once you've gone through, I've gone through twice, I'm just going to pull through to the back again. And the reason I'm going through to the back is so that I can pull it tight and just indent the eye a little bit. So once it's indented, I'm just going to put my thumb on it to hold it in place and then do a couple of stitches just to secure it. Then same on the other side and then I'm going to be adding the nose as well so if you just squish it back into shape come on through and again just work out where you want the nose to be and I think I want to form a triangle I'm going to have it quite high up so just under the eyes there go and then once you've done a few stitches just to secure just put your needle through and come out through the side again with the scissors I'm just going to push against the side of him and snip and you can see that the thread there is hidden now because he'd still got a bit of squishiness to his head he has actually uh, gone a little bit flat so what I'm going to do with my needle is just stab from the side and bring everything in and round it off again now if you wanted to and you've got enough fibre left over you can add some to the back now there is an indent and you can see the stitches don't worry about that at the moment what we're going to do is we're going to make the ears first and then when we attach them we can hide this bit Okay, so this is the fibre I've got left over. I am going to put a bit to the side just in case I do need to hide anything. For the rest of the fibre, what I'm going to do is just pull it apart and get it nice and fluffy just because some of the bits are felted. And this also helps to mix all of the fibre together and get the colours blended. Okay, once I've got that, I'm going to split it into two equalish parts. That's about right. Roll one of them into a bit of a ball pop it onto the cushion and I'm going to be stabbing the shape of an ear so what I want is just a nice curve round to a point same from the other side 
and what this does is it pins it to the cushion so that if I just gently with my finger just roll the fibre up it should hopefully keep the shape that we've stabbed. Now because this fibre is say it's felted in places and it's not as smooth as what we'd normally use um, you just need to take this a bit slower and be a bit more careful just because it's not going to felt together quite as quickly as uh, the fibre I'd normally use would. So once you've got your basic shape, I'm just going to stab straight down over the whole thing and start that felting process. Once that's starting to felt, what we're going to do is just peel it off and we just do this gradually, pinch as close as you can to the cushion as you peel and that way you won't stretch it out of shape. Flip it over and then stab straight down over the whole thing again. And we're going to keep doing this peeling it off and flipping it and stabbing until it no longer sticks to the cushion. Okay, so once it's smoothed off and it's no longer sticking, what we're going to do is just smooth out some of these edges and just because you can see there, there's some lumpy bits and it's, it's just not how I'd want it. So you do that by just pinching between finger and thumb. You want a firm pressure but not something that's too tight. You want to be able to get your needle in there. And what we're going to do is work against our index finger and just get the needle between the felted piece and your index finger and just slide it using little sawing jabs. And just work your way along. And if you have a look there, see the smoothness there compared to the lumpy bit? So keep working your way along both sides until you've got a nice smooth finish. You might need to go over the point at the end of the year a couple of times just to get the finish you want. Just take your time. Okay, once that's starting to look smooth, what we can do is lay it down on our cushion again and just stab right along that edge. And this just helps fix what we've done into place. Okay, so we've got ourselves a nice little ear there. What we're going to do now is bring in our other piece of fibre Use the one that we've just felted as our template, hold it down and just stab around the outside edge. There we go and that gives us our basic shape. I'm now going to go over that and create another one so we've got two the same and then I'll be right back. Okay, much stabbing later. We've got our two little ears. Don't worry that one's slightly longer than the other because we're going to be felting in these ends anyway. So what we need is our little man and we're just going to work out where we're going to put these. Now these are quite big for the size of him but yeah we're just going to go with it. So what I'm going to do is just start by attaching one of them to the back of his head and what I like to do is just attach one corner first and just make sure that that's really nice and secure. So I'm doing quite deep stabs here, just trying to catch any loose fibres and really stab them down and in. And then once I've got that, what I can do is I can just bend the ear slightly. So I do it by just folding it in half and then I will stab the other side down and into the side of his head. Again, just to secure it. And once it's secured, we can just have a good old stab over the whole thing and just really get it sticking in place. And I'm stabbing down from the ear towards the body. And that's just so that we get all these fibres pushed downwards. If we stabbed the other way, um, there's just a chance the ear would fall off. And once it's in place, we can just fold it in half again and stab just the two sides together, just so that they will hold shape. And then I like to stab just inside as well. Again, just catching those fibres a little bit higher up now and stabbing them down into the head. Go. And I quite like it if they kind of flop a little bit, so you can just do that by hand, just pinch and pull. So I'm going to go and attach the other ear. I'll be right back. There we go. So both the ears are attached now. Just where we did our stitches before, we've got a little bit of an indent. Now, if you remember, we kept a little piece of fibre. So what I'm going to be doing is just popping it just over that spot and then we just stab just around the outside first. Just take it really slow just because our stitches are under there so you might find a bit of resistance to your needle if you're stabbing. Um, so yeah, just nice and slow. And once you've gone around the outside edge, what you can do then is just stab over the whole central part, just little jabs close together just to smooth it out. And the reason we, we stab around the outside first is just because if you stab straight into the middle, you'd find that all of your fibre got sucked into the bit you're, you're stabbing and um, you wouldn't be able to create this nice patch over the whole area. Now I was finding that as I was stabbing, it was causing an indent just because the head isn't as well felted as it perhaps should be. So what I've done is just given a bit of firm, firm pressure by squeezing 
to either side and then when I'm stabbing it shouldn't create that indent. Okay so now just smooth out if you need to. If you do find that um, your patch is really noticeable, mine is a little bit, what you can do is either use an awl or in my case I've got some scissors handy and what I'm doing is just using the points and just really lightly brushing them over the top of that patch and just spreading the fibre out and then once you've done that just take your needle then just stab outwards from that patch just blend the fibres in to the surrounding area if you find like me that it's quite fluffy what you can do is just use a really low angle with your needle and just use the, the little notches in the side of the needle to catch those fibres and tuck them away under one thing I haven't done yet is add his tail. Now for that I'm going to be using just some of this plain white so that it shows up and it's a really simple thing to add. All we need to do is just take our, our fibre, roll it into a bit of a ball. We're going to lay it where we want it, so just where the line ends there for the bum. A couple of stabs just right in the centre just to anchor it in place so it's not going to be moving about. And then with the needle pointing inwards towards that central point we've just stabbed at, we're just going to stab down. See there it's a 45 degree angle. So what I'm doing is I'm just catching these loose fibres at the edge and stabbing them down into that central point and working my way round and doing that all the way round in a circle. And the size of your circle will dictate how big your tail is going to be. If you want a big tail then you can just do a big circle, small tail, small circle. Now I'm not stabbing too deeply here, just deep enough to catch that fibre and felt it into place. Once you've done a full circle and you've got it attached, just go around and catch any loose bits that are sticking out further than others, tucking them right in there. So use quite a, a deep angle. You can see that there. Just smooth out that circle. And then if we want our tail to be just a little bit less fluffy, what we need to do is just work from a little bit higher. Just catch these fibres, if you can see there, and stab them in as we did when we were creating our circle. Take this slow because we don't want to damage our needle as we're doing it and we also want a nice finish to our tail. Now I'm just going to do a couple of stabs for bits that are sticking out a bit more than others and also I want it to look quite fluffy so just a few random stabs help give that effect. There we go. Now I don't want to overdo this, it doesn't need to be solid, it just gives us a nice little fluffy cotton tail there. Okay so that's our finished little dust bunny. If you wanted to, you can add arms to him. You could do a little felted nose rather than a shiny one. You can do whatever you want with him, really. And um, I quite like that every single one that I make is always different. Now be sure to click on that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss out on future videos. Next time, we're going to be making one of these. And thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay warm. I will see you next time.